It's me, Professor Sko, and today is a really big day. I scored an interview with one of the best meteorologists in the business, Kellyanne Class of West Channel 2 in Orlando. Yeah, it is always exciting to chat with a fellow scientist. Kellyanne has a college degree in meteorology and atmospherics from Penn State. And pretty cool, huh? I can't wait to learn from her. In fact, I've got to get the Zoom meeting started right now. I just wanted to grab some tea for our chat. Hey, would you like to meet Kellyanne too? Okay, well let's go do it together. I don't, I don't understand. I'm not getting this. Professor, do you have some sort of robot filter on Zoom right now? Can you turn it off, please? Frosty, what are you doing? Oh, beakers, I am so, so sorry about that. That was real? What was that? Well, <laughs> he's one of my lab assistants. Wow. Yeah, okay, so are you ready to get started? I have so many things I wanna to talk to you about. First of all, I think it's so cool that you have a college degree in meteorology and atmospherics. Thank you, I think it's so cool that you have a degree in physics. <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks. But today, today is all about you. I'm sure you get this question a lot, but why did you choose meteorology and atmospherics as a major for your degree? I love science and I love math and being able to see math and science in play in real time is just really cool to me. And everything that you can do and figure out from the equations, going through the physics and all the science and all of the math, it's just really cool to see mother nature at work and how it produces different things like snowstorms, tornadoes, heat, all that cool stuff. Awesome. Now, did you encounter any issues being a woman majoring in a science field? And it's a little bit hard to be a woman in a science field uh, because you are predominantly outnumbered by men, but um, I didn't let that kind of weigh me down. I, it actually was kind of the fuel to my fire to do better and achieve greater things. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people that you know thought that they, they were better than me just because that they were a male. But um, you know, I just I worried about myself and focused on what I wanted to accomplish. That's incredible way to overcome that challenge. Now, this is a very special time of year. It is the start of hurricane season, and with you being in Florida, is that a big deal for weather forecasters? It is. We look at stuff, uh, models and data way out in advance to see what we can expect over the next two weeks or so. Now, of course, the further out you go, the less accurate it's going to be. But it's still something we like to look at. And we always prepare for hurricane season by making sure you have the necessary supplies, make sure you have at least food and water for each person in your household for at least three days and prepare for power outages depending on where you live, but hurricane season is absolutely a big deal. Whether it's just a tropical storm or even a category five hurricane, there can be some impacts from those storms. Absolutely, wow. So hurricanes, well, for me, the coolest thing in physics is super massive black holes. Do you have a favorite atmospheric phenomenon? So my favorite atmospheric phenomenon is tornadoes. They can happen anywhere any time of the year, but there's a difference between a tornado and a funnel cloud. Do you know what the difference is between a tornado and a funnel cloud? Hmm. Don't know? Go to professorsco.com and click on in the know to find out. Okay, so I'm really curious, Kellyanne, what does a typical day look like for you? Well, since I'm on the morning show, it's an early call. I wake up at 2 a.m. every single day, Monday through Friday, and I get ready. I get my coffee and I get my breakfast. I go to work. I look at the forecast. In the different layers uh, or levels of the atmosphere, 
I look at different types of parameters. So think of the ground all the way up to the cert, the atmosphere, all the way up to the top of the atmosphere as a different layer of cake. So each layer kind of has something different. So in the upper la layers of the atmosphere, think of the jet stream. The jet stream is very important, especially during severe weather events where we could see the best chance of tornadoes or thunderstorms, or even in the winter, the best chance where we could see a little bit more heavier snow compared to other locations. Then as you progress your way down, you look at other things called cold air advection, warm air advection. That is basically just saying, is the cold air at the top of the surface going down to the bottom of the surface, or if the warm air is going to the bottom of the surface. So there's a lot of different things happening in each layer. So I get an idea of what's happening. Then I prepare my forecast. I look at current temperatures, current sky conditions, current winds, because that all has a factor in how it's going to play into the future. And then I do my forecast from there. So is it going to rain today? Do we have a high pressure that will keep us hot and dry? Or do we have a low pressure just off our coast that'll keep us cool and windy? It all just depends on, of course, the different types of weather in the different parts of the United States. Oh my goodness, I had no idea so much was involved with meteorology. Okay, so if someone is interested in majoring in meteorology, but maybe doesn't want to be on TV, what other career options do they have? There's a bunch of different career options besides television. You can do what we call operational meteorology, which is basically just forecasting. Uh, this is something that folks at the National Weather Service do, where they also are the ones that produce the watches and warnings for local areas, whether it's a tornado warning, a severe thunderstorm warning, or a winter weather advisory. So they cover a broad spectrum depending on where you are. If that's not for you either, you can also go into research. So is there a certain type of atmosphere phenomenon that you wanna learn more about? Something that piqued your interest and what you wanna know what could happen if certain parameters line up, you could always go into research. You can go into what we call the private sector which is basically just private forecasting for businesses. So there's a lot that you can do outside of television broadcasting. It just depends on what you like. Wow, absolutely. And what kind of advice would you give to our viewers who might be interested in pursuing a career in a weather-related field? So if you have any interest in weather, I suggest you try to shadow somebody, whether it's in television and research, talk to them, understand what their typical day is like, kind of why uh, they got into the field and why they love what they do. And if you can, maybe go and shadow them for an entire day, see what their day is like. If you don't like a certain aspect of meteorology, so let's say you thought about research, but you want to go into television, nothing wrong with that. You always have that opportunity to be able to figure out what you want to do. The great thing about meteorology is once you get your degree in meteorology and atmospheric sciences, you can do anything with it. So if I didn't do television, I can go into research or I can go to the National Weather Service. So as long as you know the science, you know the physics, you know the math and the meteorology, you are able to accomplish anything that you want. Oh my gosh, what an incredible message, Kellyanne. And, and lastly, I've got to ask, speaking of shadowing, maybe when things become safe, do you think it would be okay if my viewers and I came to the station and, oh, yes, and maybe I brought two robot lab assistants and we actually got to see what it is you do in person because there's still so much I want to talk to you about. Would that be okay? Absolutely. You guys are always welcome. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, Kellyanne. I so enjoyed getting to meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Wow. Kellyanne is amazing. Who would have thought that we would talk tornadoes and hurricane safety and learn all about the different layers of the atmosphere and how they predict the weather? And for me, it was so cool to know that physics and meteorology are really just applied math. Okay, I need to get back to SCO Labs. Until next time, keep sciencing, SCO fans.
always exciting to chat with a fellow scientist.